Hey, it's Shane from Performance EV. Today we're still trying to figure out how to put our Nissan LEAF motor in our Porsche 911. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. For those of you new to the channel, this is my project to put a Nissan LEAF motor into a Porsche 911. Um, over the last few weeks, I've been mulling over how to actually fit the motor, as in where to put it, how we're going to get drive to the, the wheels. And today is a continuation of that process. Um, the kind of experiments and investigation I've done over the past few weeks have been extremely helpful. And now I want to try and kind of take that information and go back under the car and just see if we can get a step further into figuring out how exactly to fit it. Um, I really need to say a big thanks to all the people in the comments who've um, provided their ideas and input. It's really helped to kind of keep me keep me on the straight and narrow, as they say. Um, you know, stop me from going off in very wrong directions or doing something that might cause me um, major problems in the future. So why don't I take you through what I've been doing and where we are, and we'll see if we get any closer. So after some conversations in the comments section, um, I'm kind of revisiting the idea of being able to use this upside down, despite what I said on the last video. Um, I think I had probably been slightly misinterpreting how this unit looks. Um, and that was kind of driving my logic on it. So you've actually got three points at which um, you can, I guess, access the inside of the uh, gearbox in terms of kind of adding fluids and that sort of thing. And I had foolishly been assuming, or I'd foolishly been assuming that this was the uh, filler plug and that, I guess, essentially the, the unit was filled to the brim, but that's not actually the case. And it makes sense because otherwise you'd have to have a much stronger seal here to prevent fluid squirting out. So the actual filler piece or filler plug is here and the transmission fluid only goes to the bottom of the plug. So I guess just underneath um, the opening of this hole that the CV joints go into, which means that only really the biggest cog and maybe intermediate one actually have any decent amount of oil on them which means that that oil channel and that reservoir that we saw in the previous video um, I think it was around six minutes in is actually designed to direct the transmission fluid onto the um, kind of the intermediate and you know drive cogs so that means we've only got this much kind of oil or fluid transmission fluid in the unit and if we go and turn it upside down that's totally going to change how the um the fluids move around inside it so if we invert the gearbox and look at how we might potentially hold it you'll see that um well yes number one the filler plug is now totally useless because it's only going to put probably I'd say half of what the um, the capacity was previously into it um, any more will start to seep out through the the seals here um, but it also means that the kind of primary drive and the intermediate cogs are way out of the fluids and all that's going to happen is this one will slosh around in a small bath of um, transmission fluid. I guess a little bit will get on here, but nothing will really get on the primary input, um, which, you know, th this thing won't run for <laughs> any length of time um, like that, unfortunately. So I think, yeah, the idea of running this upside down is a, a bit of a non-starter. Um, I'm gonna 
take this back into the engine bay shortly and see if there's any way that we can fit it the right way up. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll go down a different path. So there's a lot of guesswork going on when I tried to uh, look at how the engine was going to fit in the past. Um, because I was, you know, slotting the engine into the space, but a good bit lower than where it would actually need to sit. So to take some of the guesswork out of this, I've actually built a new dolly for the motor, which should put it at a much closer height to where I currently have the car. And then we can see how how far off we are and what sort of uh, bright ideas I have to come up with for this. So first up, the good news. The dolly definitely works. I'm really happy with the height that it's given me um, of you know where I want things to fit compared to how the car is sitting, the um, where the drive shafts on the motor are on the gearbox. Exit is at the right height relative to um, everything else in the car. So that's fantastic. The bad news is it's highlighted just how far off things are. Push the motor as far in as it can go based on you know, everything that's fouling at the moment. And right now, the drive shaft would be exiting here and it needs to exit here. So that's a fair distance out. So let's look at where we're really having the problems there. The main things that I saw previously, but I I think it's a little bit worse than I had originally estimated. So the exits on the gearbox are about 15 centimeters or about six inches out from where I want them to be. So we need to move, be able to move everything, obviously 15 centimeters further forward. So the areas that I'm having the problem with, there are a few of them. So one of them is the parking brake on the, gearbox, uh, so I went into detail on how it worked um, in the previous episode, but if I try and fit the motor like this, I would have to cut it off, um, including all the kind of mounting uh, points for it. So that would render that unusable. If we come towards the motor itself, actually on the left hand side things are they're not too bad. Um, I don't know if the perspective shows up well on this camera, but um, I think we could essentially come back to here without having to cut anything off and not foul on the central tunnel or the, the space between the two seats. Um, but if we come over to the other side of the motor, this is where we have the, the kind of big problem where I knew it always was going to be. Um, it's just a question of whether we can get around it. And unfortunately, I'm not convinced we can. So this is, as I said, the seat area um, that we're fouling on. And while we could cut some of this part of the motor off, there's a limit to how far we can go before it stops being just a mounting point for the inverter and actually becomes part of the kind of main motor casing. Um, and then, yeah, we start to have a problem of, you know, how far can we cut in before it um, starts to cause a problem. Because if we take the tape measure out, we can see that six inches or 15 centimeters actually comes right in here. So we're well over halfway through the motor. And at that point, you're actually talking about having to kind of grind down sections like this, um, which is not somewhere that I really want to get into. But then we knew this was likely to be the case anyway. Um, I thought things were a little bit closer, but to be honest, they're not. And 
we're just going to have to think differently. So pushing the motor in upright, straight into the tunnel, um, we would need to drop it down a fair bit to actually get it to fit. The car is at a bit of an angle, I've got the rear raised and not the, um, not the front, but um, again, in this case, we're, we're seeing some fouling. It's not as bad, to be honest, as when the uh, motor was sideways. The um, mounting points are fouling, but the actual core part of the motor probably would fit uh, in between the um, the two kind of buckets that form the the seats. So that's that's definitely positive. I would like to explore this option a little bit further before I go cutting anything, but it looks like this may be our, our route forward now. So as we start to whittle down the options for fitting the motor, we really end up having to focus in this space here where the front of the gearbox used to be. Um, you know, we've seen that the, the options for fitting it that bit further back, closer to where the um, drive shafts used to exit, just aren't going to work. Uh, fitting it right way up, there just isn't the clearance. And fitting it uh, upside down, we won't have the lubrication within the kind of the gearbox to, to make it last any reasonable length of time. Um, so I think we've really got two options. One is to as I've said previously, fit the motor so that it's running longitudinally across the same kind of path as the uh, you know the the main you know line of the car is, and end up with some sort of differential um, coupled to it. The challenge there is I won't be able to get um, a differential that has the same. Uh, ratio as the the leaf one, so we'll be entering a little bit of uncharted territory with um, you know using a, a slightly different ratio to what the, the leaf has. I've got more control of the leaf now with the kind of the the software and inverter controller that I'm using, but I still don't know exactly how that would turn out. Um, and the other option is to say right, we we will fit the motor the way it was in the leaf uh, and we'll just you know change the Porsche to do it to make that fit and that would essentially mean losing the rear seats from the car so cutting out these sections on either side um, to allow the motor to fit and just welding some um, sheet metal over it and then whatever changes are required to the interior to you know to make that look reasonable. Um, I'm going to call that plan Z. Uh, I don't want to have to cut the car if I can help it, um, but I do want to convert this into an electric car, so if it has to come to that, we'll do it. So I think for now I'm going to start to investigate my options when it comes to differentials. Um, given the amount of space I think I have, um, for the motor to fit and um, we'll see what options we can we can buy from breakers or something like that and go from there. So this portion of the project might take a pause for a little bit um, but we will we'll get back to it once I have the necessary parts. So we're still working on it um, obviously as I've said before this is definitely proving to be a bit more challenging than I'd hoped um, and we're gradually whittling down the, the potential solutions that exist for, um, for getting this motor to fit. Um, the one that I was kind of really putting my, um, a lot of my focus on was installing the motor upside down. That obviously isn't going to work um, with the gearbox. So we are going to have to go down a different route. Um, as I said earlier, I'm going to need, if I do go down the differential route, it is going to potentially change how the 
power is going to the the wheels um, in the there isn't really an 8 to 1 differential out there. Um, there's plenty in the kind of 4 and 4.5 four and to 1. So I might see if I can get something like that. And you know what? We'll see how it works. Um, again, I just want to say a big thanks to the, the people in the comments who kind of pointed out something from my last video that I was really just glossing over. And if I hadn't gone back and looked at it, I may have gone down the path of installing the motor in a specific way and then come to regret it a thousand kilometers later when the um, the gearbox blows up. So yeah, we're still continuing with trying to do this. Um, I've got a bit more investigation to do and then probably need to head down to the breakers or get onto eBay to find something that will fit. Um, and once we've got those parts, I'll, I'll take you through it. Uh, in the next few videos, we'll probably look at some of the other bits and pieces that still need to happen. Um, you know, there's still a lot of work left on this car and we'll take you, take you onwards through the project. But um, thanks so much for joining us on this and uh, we'll see you next time.